Welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I'll be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, go to the website svos.org. Our guest is Melissa Ayer, the artist who paints with Ayer. She defines her work as elemental art, and she uses raw materials such as pigments and primary colors and lots of basic shapes to create her very vibrant art. So welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Sally. Thank you for having me here. Oh, it's a pleasure. So your art had a very great honor. It was chosen to tour very important contemporary art shows in the United States. Tell us a little bit about this tour. It, it was a pleasure to be a part of the um, Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy. Um, they chose 10 contemporary artists to represent their brand of champagne, Ruin Art Champagne. And I was selected as um, their Dallas representative. And so my art showed at Art Basel in Miami. Nice. And um, it showed at the Texas Contemporary Art Fair and a few others. It ended at um, the Los Angeles Standard Pacific Time um, show last October with a tea and a high, um, a high tea. And a couple of movie actresses were there. Oh, Anne nice. Hathaway was one of them. Very nice. So how exciting is that? So, painting with air, what does that mean? How do you do that? It's fun. Um, I started off by um, using a leaf blower or using a hair dryer and I blew out the motor. And oh, no. I was in the garage and I picked up a leaf blower. I have a video I'd like to show of me using the leaf blower um, painting one of my canvases. Oh, I can't wait to see it. The leaf blower. Blowing paint, amazing. That'll be. Here it is. Excellent, wow, that's phenomenal. So here you are in your studio. So tell us what you're doing. What materials are you using? I'm using um, oil paints and I have the fluidity where it's thin enough where I can just push it along the canvas with the leaf blower. So do you add something to the paint? I thin it down with um, turpentine Mm -hmm. and I get it to a nice um, consistency that I like and then I pour it onto the canvas and I um, blow it around and during the video you can see in different shots of the um, movement of the paint. Right here you can see that the leaf blower is um, pushing a different color paint on top of a different one. I was taught by one of my professors at um, University of California Berkeley how to paint with watercolor. Oh, so that's where this idea started? And during class we would use a hairdryer to dry our um, background. Oh, okay. And as I was using the hairdryer to blow some of my paint, I blew out the motor and I was in the garage and I saw my husband's leaf blower and I picked it up and began using it. So do you have much control? Are you intentionally doing very specific, like for me, brush strokes are control, but this yes. is different. <laughs> how, does, how do you control it? I'm able to bend the air in the direction where I want it to go by focusing it in a specific area. I started off with a red background and then I poured a yellow on top and then an orange on top of that. So I have different layers and I'm creating a flower motif. Oh, very nice. I can, yeah, very organic. Look at that paint moving. So tell us a little bit about your process. How do you get started with these ideas? It's fun because I keep a journal with me in my purse and as I'm waiting for my children to be picked up from school in the car line, I can um, just jot down a few ideas or a few colors that I find that I like and I put them down in my notebook and then when I get stuck I'm able to um, open up my book and see where I am. 
in this one, you can see that I'm pushing the paint um, to the canvas that doesn't have any paint on it, trying to cover every square inch with the air. So do you let it dry somewhat between layers, or is it more fluid underneath as well? It's very um, fluid the whole way through, and I keep painting um, until the entire canvas is completely finished. So several different layers. You might add colors on top of mm -hmm. this as well. Wow. Correct. I think at the um, final image, you can see exactly what it had turned out to. I was into um, California poppies, and so this entire series is me making um, paintings that represent flowers. I had a show in New York at um, the Architecture Home Digest show, and I was able to show a series of um, square paintings. And these are made with pigment and raw canvas on the basic square shape with the leaf blower. Look at that. I like the texture that it creates as well. So are there settings on your leaf blower, or is it just one zoom of air? It's either <laughs> um, fast or off. <laughs> But you seem to have quite a bit of control. It's not nearly as messy as I was imagining it would be. I've gotten the hang of it. I've been doing this now for the past two years. And um, when you see the first time that I ever tried doing it, it was all over the place, all over me. And now I'm able there to control are. it more so. Very nice. I'm impressed. I had no idea you could paint with a leaf blower and come up with such gorgeous images. That's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so you brought some other uh, images for us to take a look at, some pictures of your art that we can show on the screen. So let's take a look at those now and you can talk a little bit about each painting as they come by. Wonderful. So I have um, some JPEGs that are part of the poppy collection that I've just created. And this one is Mayday. And it's one of the ones that you've seen me create with the leaf blower. And it's all air blown. When it was dry, I went in and I did the center of it with um, a paintbrush. OK, so that's not with the leaf blower. I was yeah. wondering. I mean, the little pistols in the middle. <laughs> And stamens, no. Okay, good. Everything but the entire center. And in right. the center, there is um, sand, and there's some acrylic paint put in there as well to hold the sand in place. And the sand um, I got in Miami when I was there for Art Basel. I ran out to the beach and grabbed um, a bag full of sand and brought it home with me. Very nice. And so I incorporated it into my paintings. That's me with the painting and the leaf blower over at the Golden Gate Bridge. Very nice. You can see how large it is. It's um, 36 inches by 36 inches on a one and a half um, base. I'm able to cut my own sizes, my own canvases, and stretch my own. Um, this one's called Volcanic Flower, and this too was done with the leaf blower. It was part of the series that. Um, went to New York, and it hung um, at Pier 92. Very nice. I like the dark colors. Do you start with a darker background and then add the lighter colors on top? Is that how you work, or is there? I like to start with um, three primary colors of red, blue, and yellow. And then from there, I build up. So to get the purple, I combined the red with the blue. And um, the different layers that you could see the sunlight peeking through the back of the canvas um, is just where I overemphasized the leaf blower into that one spot. Oh, so it blew away the top layer? Yeah. Oh, very interesting. So do you mix with the leaf blower, or do you mix ahead of time? <laughs> it depends. Sometimes I just mix as I go. Right. It, it depends on the energy of the moment. I like to um, call myself an abstract expressionist mm -hmm. as well because it has to do with the energy of the moment. This one, Honeybee, was um, one of the first ones where I came up with seeing that there was something there in um, blowing the leaf blower, blowing it with air. Oh, that's beautiful. I like the way that yellow really highlights it. You have a very nice way with color. Thank you. 
this one had just the red, blue, and yellow in it, where this one um, was just the blues and the reds, and then I put a little bit of yellow in towards the side so I could have some green in there. Very interesting. And then the center is um, with the sand. This one's called New Hope. This one was one of my first pieces that showed in a gallery in Lake Tahoe in one of the casinos, Mount Blue Gallery Casino. And um, it was created because um, the Angora fires were going on up in Lake Tahoe. We were living there. And um, this was the lake on fire. If you look more to the left side of the painting, the blue represents the lake, where on the right-hand side is the big um, oak trees and pine trees that were caught ablaze as wow. we were driving down the, um, from the top of the lake down to where our house was. That really shows that energy. That's stunning. Thank you. So New Hope is the name of it. Wild Thing. This one was um, donated to the Wild Foundation, and um, the money that was raised for it went to Jane Goodall. Oh, the and her chimpanzee lady. And Roots for Shoots. She's Excellent. one of my heroes. <laughs> so is this still the leaf blower style? It looks different to me. This one was done um, prior to me using a leaf blower. This was done, the background is completely in oil, and it's me um, finger painting. And um, just putting the entire canvas on there with my hands, with red, blue, and yellow, and then um, making the different colors come through, where on top with the splatter painting are acrylic paints. Interesting. And each painting has its own energy and own feel. Monarch is um, eight foot by four foot, and it started off um, me creating the canvas, cutting the wood, stretching it as Picasso's um, Guernica, where the mm. mom is holding her, her son after he's gone to war, and she's crying, and I didn't want to do it any longer, so I painted over it with um, <laughs> my hands and oil paints. The whole base is oil paste. And then I took it outside, and um, I started splattering on there with acrylic paints. It looks very outdoors-like to me, and very, I like the dark backgrounds, too. The Ruin Art was the one that was selected for um, the champagne company. And there is a bottle of um, the champagne in the center, and there's a cork popping off. And coming out of the champagne bottle itself are tubes of paint. And so I adhered, I think, 54 tubes of um, Winsor Newton paint to the canvas itself. The actual tubes. Oh. Plus oh. Um, a Ruin Art bottle and um, my palette and other things that I found in my studio, I adhered to the canvas. And so this, this was sold in auction down in LA. And the money was raised for the hospital with sick kids. Wow, so part sculpture, part painting. Mm -hmm. Three-dimensional nice. art. <laughs> Wonderful Tonight is um, a Fender Stratocast guitar adhered to a canvas. and That's an um, actual guitar. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Like Eric Clapton. And then there's two L's in Wonderful. And my husband sang that song to me, Wonderful Tonight, when he proposed to me up in Lake Tahoe. Oh, nice. And this painting. What a guy. <laughs> this painting was shown at um, the Dallas reception that I had, and from this painting of the guitar, the owner of the piano gallery asked me if I wanted to paint a piano. Oh, well, we'll hear more about that in a few minutes. And here's the piano, um, the finished product. It was in our home in um, South Lake, and the painting on the piano is called Live Energy. I painted every square inch of the piano, even underneath it. So um, the kids that it was going for could crawl underneath it and see it and touch it and everything. I covered the harp and had fun with it. Eights hung in Chelsea in March in New York. And um, it is something that I was told that the real estate space in New York for people's apartments isn't so big. <laughs> yep. So I said, okay, how can I create what I already do and what I like to do, but in a smaller scale? So these can be sold individually or together. Beautiful. So 
So we have more. That's it. Those are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about how you got into art, a little bit about your background and education. Where did you come from? Um, I was born in New York, mm -hmm. and I moved to California when I was about five or six in um, L.A. We moved to San Francisco when I was 12. I went to UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. I have a psychology and an art degree, and um, I was an art teacher. And then I went on to graduate school to study art therapy. And I worked with women at the hospital in Mount Zion, um, creating art at the bedside. And hmm. I worked with um, wow. kids in the school who had ADHD doing art. So art therapy, tell me a little bit about that. What, what art, do you do? What an art therapist does is they help the person to release what's going on internally and express it externally. When working um, at the bedside with women who had breast cancer, this one woman, um, we came up with a plan that she was going to um, paint a Pac-Man. And all mm -hmm. the little um, floating cancer were the power pellets. And so she oh. then made the Pac-Man eat all the cancer. Very interesting. So what an interesting choice of careers. And then you went on, you've had a lot of experience in the business side of art, and you've been an art juror, you told me, several times. What is it like receiving all of the images and all of the entrance from all the people and then trying to decide who gets to win and who gets to be part of whatever you're jurying? At first, it's a bit overwhelming. <laughs> I can imagine. I was part of a panel. Um, there were five on the panel, and f the first thing we were to do was to look and see who filled out the forms correctly. Mm -hmm. And we put them in two different stacks, the ones who didn't file exactly what they said that they needed to do, what was asked, the criteria, were the ones that were thrown away. Oh, you don't even look at them? No. Okay. And then um, each of us were then selecting our first, second, and third choices. And then from there, we narrowed it down to the three recipients who received um, entrance into the art fairs. Wow. So it's a large process. And is it based on your personal preference? How do you, you know, is there a criteria that's given to you to say you need to decide based on these criteria? Is it just what you like and prefer in the art? It depends. Um, some art fairs are about they need to be a certain standard, a certain size, okay. a s and what's their track record? Have they hung somewhere? Have they been participants in this art fair before? Have they been recipients of an award similar to this? And what's their professional career like? Oh. Okay, so your piano painting that you created, that we saw the image of, you created a video of that that um, shows how you created it. So let's take a look at that and you can tell us a little bit about your process for that. Wonderful. Yeah. In um, the video, I'm making the piano with my hands. I'm using oil paint and I had just sanded the piano down. It was a black lacquered piano and I was told that it had to be playable when it was finished. So I hand sanded it and then gessoed it. I taped up my um, dining room and I made it one big area where I was able to paint. And then in here you could see me using my arms and my um, hands to blend the different colors. I'm using just the primary colors of red, blue, and yellow. And I'm trying to do it in different layers, taking it from one step to another. You're really getting physical all the way up to your <laughs> shoulders. That's great. Wow. It's fun because I get into my work. I mean, sometimes I'm so spent after I'm done. I just, I sleep for, you know, <laughs> eight hours straight. <laughs> and after I was done creating the piano, I had to bathe in turpentine to, to oh get the goodness. layers of paint off oh. of my body. Oh. This piano, when it was um, completed, sold through Heritage Auction House in um, November of 2010, and it raised money for the Scottish Rites Hospital for the children that are sick. That's just beautiful. It was, it was 
fun to do. I was asked if I could do it. I'd never done one before and I said, why not? I can see your art therapy roots. Finger painting is just such a wonderful textural type of interaction with the paint. Look at that. Getting down on the floor. Oh yeah, you painted underneath, so you must have been really. This anywhere. is just um, four minutes of it. I shot, um, I believe, 12 CDs worth of it. Wow. So from beginning to end, it took me three months to create the three entire. Three months. Wow. The entire thing. That's tremendous. Well, very nicely done. So you mentioned before that you create your own canvases and you brought some of the tools and the materials with you today to show us a little bit about it. And you also have another video that we'll see in a minute, but what materials do you use and how do you go about choosing them? This is um, wood that I've cut and I've made into a stretcher bar. Any particular kind of wood that you choose? or? Um, uh, I like oak, I like pine, it depends on what I'm going for. And then I get um, raw cotton duck canvas. This is um, 10 millimeter weight, the this thickness. Thick. Yeah, very thick. And the thicker it is, the more you can pull on it and the more you can put into it. Right. If it's very thin, then it's more likely to tear. Mm -hmm. So you create the squares and then um, you wrap it like a present and you use a staple gun. I didn't bring the staple gun with me. But you brought a video that shows all of this. So let's take a look at the video and see how you use these and create a much larger canvas. Oh, very nice. And then you could make any size you like. There's audio. Tell them there's audio. So what are you doing here? Here I'm showing that I have just finished cutting the um, stretcher bars and I'm using the canvas to wrap around. I'm using the pulling tool to pull it down to make it nice and tight. And I have an electric staple gun um, attached to my air compressor that I'm going around and I am finishing off the square to make it one complete canvas when I'm done with one side, I move on to the next side. And then when it's finished, I gesso it. And then 20. How do you make sure it doesn't wrinkle in the middle or get crooked? <laughs> you use um, this wonderful tool um, by Fredericks. You can find it at any art store. And you just pull it. Here I am showing. Um, gessoing of the canvas. I put on um, two to three layers of gesso, waiting 24 hours in between each layer. So it can be a nice um, top canvas to paint upon. So does that tighten the canvas up and make it stronger? Yes. Protect it? And what the gesso does is the gesso um, covers all the holes in the canvas. The canvas, think of it as a sponge. Right. And so you're covering all the holes in the sponge. And so the oil then doesn't go through? Correct. Ah. So the paint doesn't bleed through. And so here I am in my studio. So that's a lot of work before you even start a painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it gives you some nice control, right? And the sizes that you can create? Yeah, it allows you to make any size that you'd like. The one um, behind us over here, Monarch, is um, eight feet by four feet on. Um, a three inch canvas or three inch um, wood base. So the depth is three inch. Mm -hmm. So and you can create any size you want, right? Correct. Yeah. So is this the largest that you've created so far? Or have you um, done more than that? There's one that I um, have been working on in my studio and it is 10 feet by 7 feet. Wow. 10 foot by 7 foot. That's incredible. Well, so it's fun. I mean, when I get different ideas and different inspirations, I run to the art store, go buy some canvas, and then go and get my ideas started and play. That's great. Excellent. So you mentioned that you had some shows in New York City. So that's the dream of every serious professional artist is to get a real gallery show. So tell us a little bit about 
how you manage that? What do you do to attract the attention of people like that? What you need to do is you need to build your professional website. Right. And then um, you need to gather at least 10 images on a CD. And then you develop a logo and branding and um, your artist bio, your artist statement, and um, you put it all together on the CD and then you find a gallery that has similar work that you do. I am a contemporary artist, so mm -hmm. I look for contemporary um, galleries. One in Chelsea that showed my work in March was a contemporary gallery. And what I did is I sent them my CD and they liked it and then they called me up and they said, okay, we want to feature you um, at our gallery. Very nice. So you just sent it to one gallery and that particular one liked it? Or did you send it out to, to many different ones? Um, I sent it to quite a few and this was the one that said we like you and we wanted to feature you. So that was really nice. Do you have any suggestions for the types of images that you would select for a CD like that? For um, this one, I put in the eights that we saw in the JPEG, mm -hmm. and I put in Monarch, and I put in um, my sculpture over here. This one's called Bottoms Up, and it's the splatter painting technique that I've been doing for yes. a while. So you chose some particular technique to showcase. Yes. Each CD that you have should represent a particular style that you do. Instead of having all of different styles on there mm -hmm. that you can do, pick one style that you're particularly fond of and put that on there to show the gallery that that's what you want them to represent you for. So what you're known as, yes. so your style. Well, Melissa, thank you very much for being on Talk Art. It was wonderful to see you work in your studio and to find out about your wonderful career and congratulations on the past and really good luck in the future. Oh, thank you so much. It You're was a welcome. pleasure being here. Yeah, and thank you for watching Talk Art. Thank you.